start naming, you could just introduce yourself mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about yourself. First. Okay. Uh, my name is Naomi Chambers. Um, I am a visual artist. Uh, I mostly do painting and assemblage art. Uh, so a little bit of a sculptor, a maker of things more than just like a sculptor. I don't know why I feel that way, but. Um, and I make art because I need to get things out of me. Yeah. <laughs> installation now in 1414. Can you remind us of the title? Of your yes, the title of the piece is Black Community Survival Conference, uh, Tea Party, Ice Cream Social, and Moonlit Cinema. It's the best. <laughs> Could you tell us where the title comes from and what the inspiration was for the overall installation? Yes, um, well, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, you know, I guess in 2014, uh, when everything was happening in Ferguson and everyone was kind of like, uh, everyone, meaning uh, the black community here in Pittsburgh and uh, all over the country were kind of feeling like a little topsy-turvy, thinking about safe space, thinking about where they belonged. Um, uh, I started musing on certain things. Uh, what was safety to me? Would I ever feel safe? Um, and then uh, me and my partner came together in about 2016. Uh, we came together and built a place called Flower House. And there, um, a group had came to us and asked if they could meet on Sundays. And the things that they discussed were um, how to progress the Black community here in Pittsburgh. How do they thrive here? And so we would pull together whiteboards and big pieces of paper and write out strategy uh, based off of like everyone's needs. And we did SWOT analysis and um, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy and needs and different things like that and tried to like figure out what we could do to game plan everyone getting a little bit more than we currently had. And we did that for um, a couple months and just the, the exercise that that did to my brain and how it um, kind of twirled into my art. Mm -hmm. Um, and so on occasion, I would just type in different things. I started to be look up like black prepper groups and things right. like that because my husband's kind of like a he's really big on that. And so like um, I just when I would type things like that, um, black survival groups and things like that. Uh, once upon a time, when I typed that in, I got uh, a picture for the black community survival conference came up, and I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh wow, this was like in the seventies. And I was like, so this has been like a conversation since forever, um, <laughs> forever. And I had also always been a fan of the Black Panthers and we had also used their 10 point program when we were discussing things with the group. And so um, I wanted to know more. And every time I typed it in, I would only get but so much information. But I knew that I always wanted to explore it further. Um, and as time went on, this image would always uh, just sit in my box of inspiration and um, also, <laughs> uh, everything is so super connected. My uh, three-year-old at the time asked for a tea party um, and she asked for an outdoors. She told me exactly how she wanted it. Uh, she saw an episode of Sophia uh, the first who had a, a, an outdoor tea party um, on picnic uh, blankets. And she was like, I want to have it outside, picnic blankets, da, da, da. So um, looking into that, I started looking into tea parties and how teas have always been um, a part of everyone's um, experience. When I mean everyone around the world, uh, it was used for religious ceremony, health and wellness, um, just uh, tea time, a social thing. Um, so I wanted to serve and service the black community with a tea party. Um, so fast forward, then we had a pandemic. <laughs> and so uh, into that uh, started a whole new uh, thing in my brain, imagery in my brain of like more bonkers. <laughs> bonkers, families being together um, and trying to create that safe space again trying to create a comfort for each other. Um, so that tied in with the tea party. Um, at the time, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, 
well, sorry, again, my son was born four months before the pandemic. And with him, I was thinking about teddy bears and all this, you know, imagery. And then so when the pandemic happened, the people were leaving the teddy bears at the, the, the windows for the children to do the teddy bear searches. And rainbows were a big thing. Um, my son had for his baby shower, he had, we did a rainbow sprinkle because, um, you know, second time around it's a shower. I mean, it's sprinkle instead of a shower. And we did like ice cream sprinkle like theme. And so um, the rainbows were another big thing. So it was like, I was being bombarded with all my favorite imagery and it was tied to the pandemic. And so in my brain, I had this space where the, the family, the black family, or my family uh, was where things were safe. We were serviced, we were comfortable. We had the things that like made us feel comfortable that like, so rainbows and uh, teddy bears and just these, just a goodness. Um, and it helped us to survive. So I wanted to recreate the Black Community Survival Conference, but in my context, um, for me in 2021. Um, and yeah, working on this show helped me to survive. Getting these pieces done gave me something to do other than um, get eaten up by my thoughts. So it was... I love that. Yeah. So we're gonna kind of take a little walk through mm -hmm. the space in terms of, you've got a day night Set up. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about how it moves from day to night? Yes. Um, okay. So as we talked about earlier with strategy, one of the things that I've um, included in my art, uh, I started doing it in about 2017. About um, I had a, a show called Communal Futures in, in 2018, where I used the uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs to um, create uh the things that we need resources and things like that again um and so i started this thing that when i create pieces especially in environments i wanted to include as much of the the universe um the wholeness of our world and so it the only thing i could think of and that i needed like one of the first things when i was like um i needed the skies I needed um, something that we all look up to, that we all are familiar with, um, that our ancestors are all familiar with, uh, were familiar with. We look at the same sky that they did. So I definitely wanted to make sure certain elements were here. The sky was one of them um, so that we can feel safe both at night and in the day. Um, Harriet Tubman was a big part of uh, this exhibition. Um, I wanted her uh, to be here. And she was, you know, queen of the night. That's when she worked. So I definitely wanted the night sky to be um, just as prominent as the day sky. Um, if not more, the space for us to rest. Um, of course, she worked at that time. That was her magic hour. And um, also, many are creative will tell you that there's their magic hour as well. So I just wanted it to be a whole experience for the people that came here. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Harriet Tubman is one of the, the heroines or heroes of this, and you paid homage to a lot of different um, mm -hmm. heroes. Are there other heroes that you're paying? Yes, uh, Huey P. Newton, who's one of my favorite um, in terms of uh, ways to think about uh, everyone's survival, humans all around the world. Um, he, I was introduced to uh, his intercommunalism and uh, it has taken my work further because I think in the past I was really, uh, I created really inward. Like mm -hmm. I started making art because I needed an outlet. Um, but I also want other people to be able to uh, reap the benefits of my artwork. And so uh, he was really big on uh, witnessing the things that connected us all, no matter where you were in the world, and harnessing the power of the people uh, to make the world a better place for all of us and taking down the people who aren't interested in the, the masses uh, thriving and living a good life. Um, 
And you know, that doesn't include everyone being rich or everyone being this or that. It's, it just includes everyone being respected and owed a beautiful life and enjoying the resources, water being free to the inhabitants of the earth and things like that. Just us coming together as a people and not allowing people to continue to divide us. Um, using the things that are different about us as strengths and not as like dividers. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. So I mean, when people, both in the process of putting this together, but also I've been seeing as visitors come in, mm -hmm. there's a joy that happens when people walk into this space yes. and smiling. And I'm just, um, I really want to talk a little bit about how visitors interact with your installation, but also mm -hmm. what you hope visitors get from this. Oh. <laughs> I was <laughs> somewhat, it was uh, Justin Emmanuel when he, the day before the show, he was like, oh, there's so many points of interest, you know, so many entry points in your show. And I, um, so for me, I want people to get exactly, I guess what they're supposed to get. Like there is so much going on, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know the, the particular things that people are going to be drawn to. And I think that's the most exciting thing, like watching people the first day, um, just like walk up to stuff, like prod and poke a little bit or decide to put a sticker in a certain place. Um, just let me know that like, I sometimes I would like not intentionally do something, but like it just felt right to put it there. It's like I put that there for whoever needed me to put it there. So I guess like I, I don't really have a specific thing I want people to get from it other than to be happy, like you said, to receive the joy um, and to think about um, sharing of resources um, and the universe like we don't own it um individually but at the same time we do and enjoy it don't like think of like that's talking to my children i feel like <laughs> that's another conversation i'm not going to go into it yeah <laughs> we just i just it just sparked up a conversation i had with my children earlier so but i just want them to um to receive gifts i guess whatever those are whatever they were supposed to get from any particular thing i want them to get it i love that so actually speaking of the stickers. Mm -hmm. There were other people who kind of helped with this um, project yes. and the stickers are a big part of them. So could you talk a little bit about the stickers? Yes. I'll bring all oh, the stickers. Um, so here's one of the teddies um, right here, some ice cream. I think I, I highlighted about, there were certain images that I um, was drawn to when I was creating the things for the show. Um, and I found them on like Pinterest or whatnot. Um, but they helped me to create, you know, the, the lexicon, I guess. And these were, um, I sent them to another artist named Sherelle Russian, who was my hero. <laughs> she um, went ahead and I, 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 originally I asked her for five. <laughs> I, here are five images that I enjoy. Um, do you think you can make me, you know, uh, I think I said 50 sheets for the opening. Um, and she was like, yeah, sure. And she was, I was like, okay, how much? She was like, oh, I'll do it for free. I'm like, whatever, Cheryl, like how much? <laughs> but she's just, this is how amazing she is. Um, and then me being me, unable to edit, ended up sending her like 10 images. And I was like, you can tear them down if you want. Like giving her the, the, the work, the hard work of tearing. And she was just like, she just did them all. Some of the, one of the images I got from, <laughs> from you, from, from your family, um, the tea set, the miniature tea set, which I was really excited to get um, because it, it adds into like, I like adding different layers and nuances and it, it added a nice little layer of personal, yeah. Um, in history, family history. So I felt good. Um, but she made them all for the opening night and made, packaged them. And it felt good to be able to give them to the participants who came in and like a gift, another gift um, that they could impart and put in this universe that we were creating for everyone else. Um, I wanted people to be able to have some type of buy-in um, to, you know, to be able to, because this show, I needed so many other people to create this. Um, Josh, like, 
he, I showed him my markup, my mock-up, <laughs> and what I was going for. We had a conversation, and he was like, I'm going to figure this out. And he created, like, I, yeah, I still, like, yeah. He did an amazing job. Um, all the people who painted the walls and everything. There was so much, like, that everyone was doing to help create. I wanted to further that. Like, there's certain things, like, I didn't do the clouds. I would have did it a different way. I would have painted them a different way. My hand is different. But seeing other people's hand in it, I was like, oh, wow. Like, this needs to, you know, be furthered somehow. Um, so the stickers are, stickers, I use it in my practice. When I used to teach um, different students, a lot of students are afraid to create at first. So one of the... Um, exercises that I'll do is like, let's make something with stickers. And then just like figuring out what stickers they wanna use, editing, um, composing a situation, you know, with the stickers, it builds their confidence for whatever's next. So stickers are always like a convenient, easy way to just to, to create. So um, when I was thinking of ways for people to like get involved, stickers was the first thing that came to my head. Um, so it's been really interesting to see the space change according to where people put stickers in the tea party, on the paintings, um, right next to other things, on the little plates that were empty, um, on the sculptures. So it's been really um, exciting to see uh, more hands in the work. I can't wait till the last <laughs> month when I come in and everything's just like, just different than I left it, which is, 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 is beautiful. Like I put a piece down and I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and when I come back the next, it's just, it keeps growing and changing. So it's, I'm happy. It's a living site. And yeah. It's like, like intercommunalism and practice too. Yeah. Right, I love mm -hmm. that. Um, I was gonna ask about the ice cream mm -hmm. because that's one of, well, one of my favorite places in the installation. Yeah. But it has a big history with you too. So like the polymer ice cream suit. Yeah. Um, the ice cream was actually, because I knew I wanted to do a tea party. Um, I knew I wanted to have this uh, visual video type thing, um, which I'm still figuring out and learning, which is really fun. Um, and then I was like, there, I, what more me things can I add to this to make it um, fun to do? You know, we're in a pandemic. I was not creating um, during the pandemic, and I wanted to. And uh, ice cream, I, uh, <laughs> I'm a soda jerk. I'm an ex-soda jerk. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got my start um, when I was, my school bus would always pass by Clavon's in the Strip District. And I was like, what is that place? Um, so I walked in one day for the start of the summer, in the, well, in the spring, and I was like, can I work here? And they were like, just put your name down and somebody will call you, maybe. <laughs> I remember the, the, the family member that told me that is like amazing. Right. And uh, there's, so when I learned her more, it was just the best. She's the best. Um, so then they actually called me that by the end of the week and I came down for an interview and they gave me the job and um, they taught me and trained me how to make all the treats, um, ice cream sodas, all the sundaes, all the different types of sundaes, because they had like, you know, really cool different um, Tutti Frutti was one of my favorites. And there was Martha. Martha was their mother who like really liked a lot of chocolate. And so that was my favorite dessert to make. I didn't like chocolate ice cream at the time. It was too much for me. And now I love it. But uh, it was my favorite because it was like all the chocolate things were included in this dessert. So it was like a lot of creativity, a lot of things that like um, all the toppings, doing the whipped cream perfectly to make, like you, I wanted to make sure every time someone came and ordered something, it was the most beautiful thing they, they you know, the most beautiful ice cream thing that they've had because there was no other place in Pittsburgh that would do it that way for them. Um, so I just became really like, <laughs> they <t> <laughs> and I blamed them, they made us kind of purists with like, the, like I couldn't even go to another ice cream place after that. Like, oh. even like the ice cream that we had at the time, we had rain holds, yeah. which they, which isn't in existence anymore. And their ice cream was really good. Mm. Like really, so like it was just uh, learning 
and like watching people come in and try to figure out <laughs> what they wanted or like guests became like our thing because we were there for hours at a time. So that's what we did for fun. We just like people would come in and we'd be like, I think they're going to get I'm going to they're going to get this. We kind of like racialized it a little bit, too. <laughs> it's just like because one time one of the um, one of my coworkers was like, hey, what's up with uh, older black people eating butter pecan? And I had to cry, like laughing, because I'm like, yeah, like, oh, my dad, that's his favorite flavor. All my aunts and uncles, my nana, my papa, like that, that. And um, I was just like, it's just like their thing. Like, <laughs> and then he was like, well, what's up with the young people? And I was like, I know, I know, cookies and cream. So like the younger black people would get cookies and cream a lot. And let's just wear these things. And I was like, well, what's up with y'all getting blah, blah, blah. So then we like just would like play that game. Um, and it was like really a thing. Um, so then we started getting even more intricate because there's all these outliers too. Not every young black girl is going to get cookies and cream. Not every young white girl is going to get the, the birthday cake. Like we had to, <laughs> even though a lot of times we, it would be the case for us. So then we would try to like look at different things that would be like, oh no, she's a wild card a little bit. Um, <laughs> The safe one would be like, you know, millennials like coffee ice cream. So like across, you know, a uh, race or blah, 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 you'd be like, oh, coffee. Um, so there'd be just like things like that that we do. Um, just it, and it was fun. Like no one, someone said one of the customers came in and was like, yeah, you guys are always happy in here. And I was just like, and he was like, yeah, I guess no one comes in here angry. And I was like, yeah, we don't, people don't come in to get ice cream mad. Right. Like they just, it just, when you're walking through that door, you're, you, whatever you've been going through, you're going to be okay getting ice cream. Like it's just not a thing. Um, and then I worked at Dave and Andy's as well uh, when I started at uh, Pitt. Uh, one summer I did Dave and Andy's and uh, Clemens, which was so much fun. They're just, you know, two different people, I mean, uh, places, two different vibes. Um, two different groups of people coming in, so that was really cool. Um, and then uh, Dream Cream, which was uh, downtown. I worked there for a summer. Uh, actually, I worked there like as a volunteer to get money for Flower House. So before we opened Flower House, that was one of the ways that I um, that we funded opening Flower House. Me working there, <laughs> how many hours would go towards? Um, so I would like if people would get my flavor, which my flavor was birthday cake, because from working at other places, I knew you, you would make a lot of money. <laughs> it's like, people are going to get birthday cake. So I was like, okay, that's the flavor I want. He's like, what flavor is open? And he was like, I was like, I'll take a birthday cake. That's what I want. Um, <laughs> and so um, that was one of the things I funded at Flower House. I forgot about that part. Like it, you know, helped me get my dream going. Um, but, uh, and even being downtown was a whole new group of people. You know, we'd get the tours coming in and different things. And then, you know, when people come in, they want, they want more than just ice cream. Most people, some people just want their ice cream. But it, you do give a little, you know, presentation and, you know, engage. Um, so it was cool. Yeah, I ice cream. Um, so ice cream fueled your dream. We talked when you were installing too about like, the importance of play, yeah. like as part of survival and just mm -hmm. kind of the playfulness. Mm -hmm. and we played a lot actually in, in kind of the installation process, which yeah. was fun. So talk, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you said clay or play. 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 Yes, play. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. So the whole concept of play, um, I had been thinking about like career choices. <laughs> Of like, okay, I'm an artist, but I need more money in my life. <laughs> so I had always wanted to be kind of like a toy designer. Um, I was considering uh, after undergrad um, doing toy design. Um, I never went ahead with that dream, but it has come back to me recently. And then I also met Isla, who works at um, CMU, um, who is doing like this, this play project. Um, and like, we've been talking, me and her, and I realized that like, you know, as artists, we all play, you know? Um, and a lot of people don't really get the opportunity to just play or they don't, 
think that it's important to continue playing and watching my children and how much they learn from playing and um, playing with each other, uh, playing by themselves. Um, and I homeschool and one of the, like, we, we definitely have an hour where they just like, just go play. Um, but I realized that like for me, uh, and for many people, like we learn how to live through play. Um, and so it's very well a part of this survival. Um, you, it's, it's a low stakes way to get new information that you're going to take on through your life. Um, so yeah, play as survival is, is, is very much a part of this exhibition and just something that I think we all should look more into. Like I, even with my, my partner, him being a prepper, right. <laughs> sometimes like I'd come home and he'd just be out in the yard, just like, you know, just like, and it looks a little crazy to someone who's like, what does this mean? But he's like, he's, he's playing outside with nature, you know, but he's also learning about like how things kind of like, you know, you can, you hear all the time, like, um, how to do something. And it was like, oh, well, you, you know, through, and then practice it and whatnot. And we say practice as adults, because mm -hmm. you sound crazy. If you say like, oh, I'm, I'm just playing, but like it, it is play. And I, 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 I do want us to get back to um, being okay it, being okay to play uh, because I, I feel like it will, it will develop us further. As, <laughs> as <laughs> can you imagine if adults played more? Like I, I, I'm better when I play, you know, and I get an excuse, but even, even as an artist, like, <laughs> One of, my, one of my brothers was like, a couple years ago, he was like, oh, he, I mentioned something about art and he was like, oh, you're still doing that art thing? <laughs> and it's like, I, I realized that to him and like many people in my life, I just like play and just, I'm, I'm starting to be okay with that. Like, if that's what you think, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm playing. And it's like the best thing for me. Like, it's how I live. I so, that. yeah. Um, do you have a favorite part? Um, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, there's so much here. Yeah, it. I, I don't only because, <laughs> so I'm not good at editing, like I told you. I, everything that I, like I thought of the things that I really wanted in the space, and I see a representation of the things that I really wanted here, and I love, like, every, like I couldn't do without any one thing, so. I love that. Yeah, when we so were I think you would say even the little hands pointing up. <laughs> yes. Like, that, I got that because could you tell us why? You yes. Got that? The, the the pointers yes. um in the cups that are pointing up. Uh I saw the I found those at the dollar store and uh put in an order for them. And I have so many of those around the house. No, but they're they're important because they um they signify the self-actualization. So Maslow's hierarchy needs on top is, you know, self-actualization and um, getting to the point of like, ah, you know, <laughs> and so um, in the space, they're a reminder to always just just look up and we're going, it's upward. Um, and it's kind of like a, a visual chanting of, <laughs> of up, like we're all, we're going up where it's, it's up is the it, like look up, be up, feel up, see up, you know, um, yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So the whole show is about home, mm -hmm. and we've been kind of bonded as a, a group. What's home to you? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, truth and honesty, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that's always been a big uh, musing for me, especially in my adult years. Uh, home for me is uh, I've lived in Pittsburgh. Um, so yeah, Pittsburgh, uh, my family, wherever my family is. Um, so my family is here and elsewhere. Um, but since starting my own family, wherever the two little people are and my partner, um, and we actually like on the way over here, I saw somebody with a Winnebago. <laughs> And all I was just like, oh, I wish like that. The, right now, the, the dream is to make home mobile. 
and um, try to find home. Like where, where am I supposed to be? Um, I know me and my partner, like 2018, we both went to um, Houston and we, when we touched down, we were walking around in the, the neighborhood, we both acknowledged that it felt like we had been there before. It was weird. I've never felt that way. And I was like, I feel like I've legit like have been here. And he was like, yeah, me too. It's so weird. And we had both found out like my family on my, my pop up, they were from Corpus Christi, Texas. And he found out that his family was also from, had lived in Corpus Christi, Texas. And so like in our head, like we just made, we were like, yo, what if like, we're like, we, we just touched, you know, we, we had touched where we had been before, you know, on some like genetic stuff. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where home is. I'm looking for like my, the universe basically is my home. Like, just like everyone else. Um, and then just feeling like where's home? I haven't felt it yet other than just like, you know, walking outside and just everywhere, just being a citizen of the world. Um, and uh, so yeah, home is earth. Um, and more specifically, I think wherever it feels good and wherever my two little people are, my partner. Yeah, um, but yeah. Unless you want to share something about that. Oh, no. Ask, no, you know, no. Or take us through any. Oh, sorry, no. I'm Is there any continued, um, like, what's the continued stare situation? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just in general. Um, so, like, um, yeah, no. Like, I've, me and Sherelle talked it out, and uh, I told her that I'm going to continue to <laughs> to monitor how many you guys need. Cool. Um, as visitors come in, you can offer them a pack. Um, those who might oh, want singles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or if someone wants singles, you can do you can offer them a single. Um.